Okay, let's try this again real quick. Uh, just not for y'all. Let's put on my students. The video didn't work. So um, I just want to make a video real quick to help you out through number five on the assignment if you haven't already done it. Um, it talks about half-life and radioactive decay. And so I just want to show you the problem and show you the notes that I put on the board. Um, the problem says that uranium-235, uh, which is a type of uranium, has a half-life of 704 million years which basically means it takes 704 million years for half of that uranium to turn into lead. Um, so to become less radioactive and to turn into a completely different element. Um, half of it will turn into that element lead in 704 million years. So they want to know if the ratio of uranium-235 to lead-207 uh, is 1 to 3, how old is the sample of rock? So I'm going to turn the lights on. We're going to come over here and look at this chart of half-lives, which I don't even think was in uh, Discovery Education. But here we go. I made one for you. So the way half-life works, um, when you start out at the very beginning, your rock has 100% of that radioactive element in it. Um, so 100% of the urania, uranium atoms are still uranium. Um, after one half-life, whatever time frame that is, it'll be different for every different radioactive element. But the one in your problem is 704 million years, but it could be something else. After one half-life, half of that 100% of that radioactive element is gone. So you cut it in half and you have 50%. Um, after two half-lives, you cut that 50% in half again. So 50% gets cut down to 25%. Um, after three half-lives, you get cut down to 12.5%. Um, and the amount of, as your radioactive element is decreasing, the amount of your non-radioactive element is increasing. So if I have 100% uranium, I don't have any lead. Um, but once I get down to 50% uranium, I now have 50% lead. Um, and when I get down to 25% uranium, I have 75% lead. So see that each of these are adding up to 100%. Um, and it gets even higher when I get down to 12% of uranium. I have 87.5% lead. Um, and so each of these is one half-life. And it can just keep going until it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Hello? Hello? Yes, no problem. All right. Terry, we go see Mr. Stone. Yeah. Uh, so it just keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller until you only have a couple atoms of radioactive element left. Um, so notice that you can put fractions on these. If I have 50%, that's one half. If I have 25%, that's one quarter. If I have 12.5%, that's one eighth. Um, and so those fractions can kind of be related to the problem. You see on the problem, they say you have a one to three ratio of uranium to lead. Um, that means for every one part uranium, you have three parts lead. Uh, the problem is one third doesn't really fit in to any of these fractions. You have one half and one quarter, but not one third. Um, so remember that a ratio doesn't have a total. It's one part uranium, three parts lead, where a fraction does have a total. It's one out of four total that you have on this fraction. So one third or one to three ratio should be equal to one to four uh, or one quarter of a fraction. Um, so now the question is one quarter of your, ha of your radioactive material is how many half-lives? It should be two half-lives. So one quarter is equal to two half-lives. And if you go back over to the problem um, and they ask you how long has this taken, how old is this sample is what they're asking you. Um, if you have uranium that's undergone two half-lives and each half-life is 704 million years, what you need to do is take the 704 million years and multiply it by two. Um, if you multiply it by two, that should tell you how long two half-lives is, and you should have the proper amount of uranium left compared to uh, your lead. So I hope that helps you out a little bit. Um, sorry it took me so long on the video. I had it recorded, and it didn't take. So hopefully this one takes. Fingers crossed. Uh, see you tomorrow.